Welcome to City Line. It is a rainy, cold fall morning. Today is Thursday, September 28th, and we have a fabulous show ahead of us. As you saw in the wide shot, we're up to some good cooking trouble here in the corner. So that's going to happen in our fourth segment. Wade is here from the Grand Cinema to talk about the film festival and all of the things that are going on at the Grand Cinema. Never a dull moment in between bites of popcorn. Uh, an organization that I have chased for years, and they are finally here in the studio, say Opa with me. It's the 60th Tacoma Greek Festival, and Angela and Olga will be on the couch, and they've brought some treats also. And then with me right now is our wonderful Lauren. She is here with our pet of the week. Good morning, Lauren. Who did you bring with you that needs a forever home? Good morning. We have sausage here today. Oh. He's just as adorable as they come, as you can see. And he's about three years old. That's our best guesstimation. Um, but he's ready for a home of his own and a loving family. He, he, just, oh. he is just, he is perfect. We decided before we went live that he was a bratwurst. Yes. <laughs> just for Oktoberfest. Yes. And let me tell you, to our, our, our families at home, he came in here and he made a beeline for our guests. <laughs> Talk sure about did. friendly, he gave kisses. Incredible. How old do we think sausage is? We think about three. Okay. Yeah, so a solid, young, yet mature age. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And mm -hmm. and with slow and gentle introductions, would sausage, do you think, be okay with children, with other animals? I think so, just based on his temperament that we've seen this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's ready to go home with any family. Oh, I think so, too. So yeah. speaking of that, over the weekend, um, the, the Humane Society uh, took in a huge amount of puppies. So tell us what's going on at the Humane Society right now. We did. Over like 48 hours, we received uh, 13 puppies from three different locations in Pierce County. Um, so donations are very much needed yes. now and every day to help those puppies and all the animals we care for. Um, you can help out on our website, thehumanesociety.org. Um, where you'll also see sausage and um, you'll get a glimpse at our upcoming vaccine and wellness clinic that's happening this Saturday, Excellent. the 30th, uh, for low-income families, thanks to our partners at Petco Love. I love that. Sausage, it's been a great 30 seconds to meet you and I know that you're on your way to lots of butt rubs and tummy rubs. <laughs> he certainly cool. is. Thank you so much Thank for you. Being here. Now, with me on the couch are two women that are pardon the pun, wrapping things up here in Tacoma. We're talking about the Monarch Diaper Bank at the Children's Museum of Tacoma. Yes, we're all going, that's genius. Let's find out who's running it and who's behind it. Please join me in welcoming back Alyssa Tung. You are the Learning Experiences Director for the Children's Museum of Tacoma. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Has it been that long that you were on with, with your brand new middle child, Sadie? I think so. Wow, she's the youngest person we've had on City Line, and she still holds the crown. There we go. This one, speaking of crowns, my <laughs> goodness, Miss Maxine McCallum, what a great last name. You are the founder of Monarch Di Diaper Bank. Welcome to City Line, my dear. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you both of you here on the comfy couch. So um, Alyssa, let, tell me more about Monarch Diaper Bank and when is it available in conjunction with this programming? Sure, so the Monarch Diaper Bank is open every Thursday and every Saturday at the Children's Museum of Tacoma during our operational hours from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then the beautiful thing about having it open on Thursdays is that the Children's Museum, along with our other museum friends in the museum district, stays open later on the third Thursday of the month. Yes. So on that third Thursday of the month, the diaper bank is open until 8 p.m. So really trying to support families in accessing it at a weekday, an early evening-ish mm -hmm. time, and then on the weekend as well. Oh. 
As always, Green Trike, also known as the Children's Museum of Tacoma, has thought of everything for those parents that have to keep, as all parents do, lots of plates spinning in this day and age. Maxine, would you share with us the history behind the name? Yes, yeah, so I had a stillborn son in 2018, and kind of in dealing with that loss, whenever I would see a monarch butterfly, I would kind of say, hey Arlo, just to myself, yes. um, and it became kind of a thing in our family, even my kids, they see a butterfly and they kind of greet Arlo, and I always tell them he's there. Um, and we have done a diaper drive every year since his passing to kind of continue on his legacy. Yes. So what? So that inspired the creation of the diaper bank was, was Arlo and the monarch butterflies. So when we think about that and we pair it, because this seems like a peanut butter and jelly moment if I ever saw it. When my daughter was little, she had cloth diapers and I would have been on this, <laughs> even just wanting to talk to the other moms, maybe at pickup or drop off, because, you know, Moms need other moms. So what do they need to do in terms of picking up diapering supplies and do they need to register? Walk, walk a busy parent through this, Alyssa. Yeah, well, and we also acknowledge it's not just parents who are caring for That's children. So the Monarch Diaper Bank is open for free to any adult who cares for a child. We bring out a cart, the diapers and the wipes are organized by size, they're tied with an orange ribbon, and then we're trusting that families who are using the diaper bank are needing it, and we're Absolutely. not going to ask any questions. There's an invitation for families to share a little bit more about their family so we know who's using this resource, but we want to remove as many barriers as possible so that so families yeah, so that families can have the materials that they need. So they're welcome to take a 25 diaper bundle for each of the children in their home, a package of wipes per each child. And then if they're coming every Thursday, every Saturday, we just feel so grateful that we get to have this resource available, again, for free with as many of the barriers removed as possible yes. for families to access as they need it. Oh, okay. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Well, and to that point, if I may, too, Maxine had a birthday party at the Children's Museum and just kind of had this idea of what might it look like if a family were coming to play at the Children's Museum and were able to access diapers. So you so came to us and shared the idea of the Monarch Diaper Bank. And for our executive director, Tanya Durand and myself, I think it was one of the easiest yeses yes. that we could get behind <laughs> of how the Children's Museum can be an even bigger resource for Absolutely. families. But when you mentioned the Monarch Butterfly, our Children's Museum logo is intentionally ishy. Um, we're not quite sure what it is, but for so many young children, they see it as a butterfly. And so it was just one of those affirmations that this is a way that we should be partnering together. It's beautiful. It is, it is so symbolic. It's just unbelievable. So since opening, this is a question for both of you, because you're going to receive feedback also from your other customers or people who say, I didn't know you were there. Tell me about that. And of course, you are face to face with our, our, all of our customers that walk in and our family. So what's the feedback been like since you started this, Alyssa? I think the best feedback was uh, a recent story of a mother with a three-year-old and two twins that was Ooh. coming out for her first solo venture with her children. So she had twins front and back, three-year-old toddler needing to use that big, beautiful kinesthetic body of theirs. Noticed the diaper bank, was not aware that that was happening, was taking supplies for just one of her children. And our staff member came alongside and was just invited her to, if you need to take for your three-year-old and your other twin, please. And she just was so moved that the invitation to take what was needed for each of her children was available. So it's been really incredible to see families coming to the museum because we're pay as you will, so we yes. can be free for families. Um, finding out about the diaper bank. The diaper bank has also brought families specifically for that resource, and then they're finding out about the Children's Museum and the fact that they can come and play too. So I know more stories will be part yes. of this journey, but it's just been so well received and we're really grateful. And what feedback have you received from family and friends in your community going, 
wow, this is a big step. The uh, Children's Museum is, is a well-known, successful organization. Are we sure we're up to this? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that everybody I know just loves Green Trike and the Children's Museum yes. and know that they're going to be amazing stewards of, of this diaper bank, um, mm. which is exactly why I came to them with the idea. I knew that they were going to execute it to perfection. Um, but everybody's been super supportive on our end. We use our businesses to kind of encourage our diaper drives to grow and, and support um, the diaper bank. Um, and people are really excited that it's a resource that's available in a place where um, it's a very dignified experience and somebody can bring their child to play and just get the things that they need while being able to engage with their child in such yeah. a beautiful way as well. So finish this sentence for me. Uh, Monarch Diaper Bank is different from other diaper banks because? Um, there are no questions asked. There we go. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All barriers are taken away, and you just get to connect with that that caregiver, that parent. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fabulous. Pierce County is pretty amazing, though, too. There is, through the Pierce County Early Childhood Network, a bunch of various grassroots diaper banks that were lifted up during COVID that are offered throughout our community. So. I want to give credit to the fact yes. that we are one organization through an amazing partnership that is working to support families to ensure that they have their diapering needs. But having that housed in a children's museum is, it's dreamy. It, it is totally dreamy. It is the sparkliest thing I've seen in a long time. So one of the things that the Children's Museum of Tacoma is known for, also known as Green Trike, is that you have another museum on JBLM. So um, my question is, um, what makes the Children's Museum downtown a good location? And then secondly, are we waiting just because we know what's going to happen. This is already a success mm -hmm. to launch it on JBLM. That is absolutely the plan. And for us, we wanted to get our bearings in terms of what does it mean to have a, a, a diaper bank in a children's museum? Because our anticipation is that the need at JBLM for our military families will yes. be greater. And we yes. want to, again, uh, be a scaffold and a support to those oh. families with this basic yeah. need. That is, that is beautiful, a scaffold and a support, because they, they all have different functions in there. Um, aside from supplies, um, what other offerings and resources are you bundling with this so you can take care of a family, not just um, a function? Yeah, so we are working to develop a handout to share tips and strategies with families probably affirming things that they already do to just really support that secure attachment mm -hmm. between the adult caregiver and their child. So that's something that we're working on as a team and we're excited to pilot and have that offered as part of the diaper bank. And then quarterly, Green Trike has a program called Green Trike Cares that we mm. started with Mary Bridge Child Life Specialists. And so at different times during the year, there will be kits, um, creative and connective art kits that are also available with the diaper bank so that families can take that resource home with them in addition to playing at the museum. Okay, so I'm back now with my daughter when she was a toddler. Mm -hmm. And if I walked in and I was able to get diapers, meet other moms, talk to professionals, and then you also offered that on top of it, a take-home art thing that I knew I could have five minutes to myself, but also just the joy of watching her create. That's a double bonus that has no limitations. Well, well done. Mm -hmm. Lastly, who do we need to thank? I'm going to ask both of you this. Um, and maybe I want to say, first off, I want to say thank you, Monarch. <laughs> wow, thank you for heeding the call. Who else do we need to thank? Again, thank you, Maxine and Glenn McCollum, for just entrusting Green Trike with this opportunity to honor Arlo. I want to thank the community, the um, interest in the Monarch Diaper Bank has been really profound of people wanting to partner with us financially or through diaper or wipe donations, which we gladly accept. And then it takes an amazing team of volunteers yes. to beautifully package the diaper bundles. And so 
it's I feel like Green Trike gets to convene and house this amazing resource, but it really is the communities. It is, absolutely. Um, thank you both so much for being here today. I want to have you back on sooner than later as we talk about as we move toward JBLM. We have much more to come on Study Line. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this quick break.